Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. I have kind of an odd one today. Uh, something you might call just sort of a slice of life from the uh, from the early 1980s. As you can see, the Panasonic Microwave Cookbook. Now, my family bought its first microwave when I was seven. I think uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I think I was I was seven, so it would have been probably seventy nine or eighty. I think it was like nineteen eighty when we got that, and that's when microwaves were starting to become a big item. Now we got a Panasonic microwave. I can actually still remember the shopping center where we got it. It um, it was a big dude because it was a it was a microwave oven and a convection oven. You could use it for either. Um, and it was pretty good size and it actually continued to be, uh, the family microwave, at least at my parents' house until maybe about five years ago, right around there. Um, when it finally had a problem that could not be fixed because the, um, <laughs> the parts just simply didn't exist. Uh, it was actually a relatively easy repair and could have probably remained in use. It was easily the best microwave oven I've ever used. Very easy to program, very easy to use, and it worked extremely well. Uh, I will not lie, I was a little choked up when I had to carry it out to the curb with my dad to get rid of, because obviously there was nothing we could do with it at that point. Uh, cause it, it kind of felt like throwing a member of the family out. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have, uh, maybe I should have taken it home and buried it in the backyard. And held a little, uh, a little memorial for it. So the interesting thing about microwaves then was that yes, while they were something useful for doing some basic heating, you know, heating your coffee, uh, and, and there were starting to be some frozen meals at that time you could do like we do nowadays. There was a general attitude that microwaves might conceivably replace traditional ovens, stoves, etc. for cooking. At least the microwave companies were pushing that idea. And it was very exciting. The idea that you could cook a meal in a very short period of time. Again, this was a time period where a lot of folks, you know, both parents working, you have limited time to, to you know, cook dinner, or to prepare breakfast, what have you. Being able to do it very quickly in a microwave was a very attractive idea. So let's, let's open this up here in a minute. First, though, we had a couple other pieces that came out of this. And this was the book that we got way back when. We got the little uh, accessory information sheet, and you can see... We had this wire rack. Now that was for use in the convection oven mode. Obviously not the microwave mode. Various cautions. Do not use the racks if the glass ceramic feet are missing or broken. Do not allow the racks to touch the oven door or any portion of the oven cavity. Do not taunt. Happy fun ball. Um, and we still have the limited warranty uh, card for this thing. So when we were cleaning out my father's uh, house before he moved we were going through a few of these things and i'm like oh i'm taking i'm taking the microwave cookbook i've got to check it out and i do at some point want to actually try to cook something from it i have not done that yet mostly because i'm pretty sure it won't be that good so this is copyright 1978 and you have the table of contents here with, you know, everything you probably, you know, uh, expect. You got sections on appetizers and beverages, sauces and toppings, soups and stews, meats, poultry, fish and seafood, casseroles, eggs and cheeses, sandwiches, vegetables and other side dishes, pastas, grains and cereals, breads, muffins and coffee cakes, sweets and treats, special extras, and an appendix and an index. So, yeah, the idea here was you were going to do an awful lot of cooking with this thing. In the introduction, you get some information on how to use the microwave to do these things, what you should not put into a microwave, what you should put into a microwave. Oh, there's the 
classic Anchor Hawking, which you can still... How good is Anchor Hawking? You can still find this stuff in thrift stores. Oftentimes missing the lid, unfortunately, but in very good shape. That stuff was built to last, as was the Panasonic microwave we had. Obviously, you don't want to use metal in a microwave, but yeah, they were, they were going to, you know, show you how to cook turkeys. They had these bags that you would use for some of the meats. So I figured we'd do a quick look through some of the recipes just to get an idea of this brave new world. So appetizers and beverages, pate, bacon bites, chicken toasties, chili dip, ole, a holiday cheese ball. Who doesn't want a warm ball of cheese for the holidays? Ooh, cranberry glazed fantail franks. Now you're talking. I could go for that. And we got some nice little color images. In fact, here is an image. I'll try to bring it in a little closer. I got a microwave in my way. A microwave. I got a microphone in my way. But I know everybody's going to want to get a nice close picture of those cranberry glazed fantail franks. Oh, with swizzle sticks. Fancy. We were fancy people in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, as anyone can tell. Um, beverages, Brazilian coffee. Café Brûlé, oh, Brûlé, uh, Cape Cod Warmer, what's in that? Three cups cranberry or cranberry juice, yeah, let's read actually one of these. Three cups cran apple or cranberry juice, eight whole allspices, eight whole cloves, four cinnamon sticks, broken. That says power select high to medium low, approximate cooking time 16 minutes, yields about four servings, six ounces each. So and that's one of the difficulties I've had with maybe trying some of these recipes. It's based on the temperature or the power settings of the old Panasonic microwave. I don't know if I can translate them well into the microwave I own now, but possibly. And it says, uh, set the power selected high. In four, club, in four cup glass measure, combine all ingredients. Heat five to six minutes. Set power select at medium low. Heat 9 to 10 minutes. To serve, cool slightly, strain into mugs. Note, for two servings, follow above procedure. Have all ingredients. Well, no kidding. Um, we have English wassail cheer, hot buttered rum, hot scotchy, mulled wine, Irish coffee, orange glow. So a whole bunch of different beverages. Sauces and toppings. Barbecue sauce, basic white sauce, Bernays sauce, Bordelais, cranberry sauce, Creole sauce. Here we got a picture of the homemade, homemade special spaghetti sauce, creamy salad dressing, easy hollandaise sauce. My wife would like that. Jiffy spaghetti sauce. So if you're in a hurry, and what does the other one take? About, oh, about one and a quarter hours. Interesting. And while I mentioned that that microwave could be used as a convection oven, there's a separate cookbook for that. So this is all stuff that is intended to go, uh, to be used in the microwave. Um, ooh, brandied cherry sauce. You can put that on your ice cream. We have soups and stews. Manhattan clam chowder. Cream of broccoli, French onion soup. Creamy corn chowder. Chunky ham chowder. Chunky soup. Bavarian stew. Oh, I skipped a page. Oh, minestrone. Meatball ratatouille soup. New England chowder. Chowder. Quick curry soup. Vicious soie. Oh, split pea. Soups might... I wonder if they... They might not be a little, as hard to do as some of the other stuff. Kind of using a casserole dish. Brunswick stew. Terrific beer stew. We have meats. And this is where, you know, if you do any real cooking, just the idea that you're going to roast a turkey in the microwave just sounds insane. Sounds utterly insane. But it could be done. I just don't know how good it came out. Chili beef liver. 
Flank Steak Florentine Filet Au Jus. Mushroom Stuffed Steak Rolls. The Fruited Pot Roast, I have to admit, that's an interesting one to me. Uses apple cider, brown sugar, uh, pitted prunes, apricot halves. I once did a, I did a pork roast like that once with apricots and, and prunes. It was really good. We've not done that in a long time. Zauerbraten, teriyaki beef kebabs. That is, oh, that's the lamb kebabs. Midget meatloaf. Not really sure what that means. I guess it's smaller than most meatloaves. Salisbury steak. Hey, dude, why are you going to scratch make Salisbury steak when you can go get a hungry man dinner? We got veal. We got pork and ham recipes. Cranberry glazed ham. That actually sounds pretty good. Southern barbecued ribs. Made in the microwave. As you would expect in the future of 1979. Crown roast of lamb. Now, see, yeah, a crown roast in the microwave. It just... Impress your friends, right? Here's the poultry section. And a lot of these use a, uh, a roasting bag, I think. It just seems like getting the skin nice and crispy would be tricky. Chicken parmesan, chicken and wine sauce. California chicken. So it uses lemon juice, onion flakes, cheddar cheese, basil, pepper. Oh, small avocado. Hey, if it was California back in the day, it was avocado. That was it. That was required. Moroccan chicken. Fiesta chicken roll-ups. Here is a roast goose with apple stuffing. Yeah, I mean, the microwave, it was the future, dude. It was the future. This is how we're going to do stuff. When we're all living on the Starship Enterprise, you know... We're going to use a microwave to do all of our cooking. It'll save a lot of space, you know, etc. Fish and seafood. Lobster in the microwave. Nothing better. We got a bouillabaisse, clams, steamer style. Sounds kind of dirty. Uh, baked stuffed clams. What do we got here? That's a baked snapper. Shrimp scampi. Parchment Seafood Spectacular, Filet Provençal, Salmon Steaks with Dill, Scallops with Herb Lemon Butter, Trout Almondine. <laughs> I'd love to start a cooking show like called the Microwave Gourmet. That would be super fun and then just do all these crazy recipes on it. That would, that would, that would, actually, be, that would actually be kind of a fun uh, YouTube channel. I'll have to think about that. Maybe I'll make an alternate channel. Uh, casseroles. Now, casseroles, I could actually picture being done in the microwave. I could see where that would work. And let me tell you something. 70s and 80s, we lived on a lot of casseroles. I sometimes refer to it as uh, Midwestern soul food. And again, it was because it was relatively easy. Throw everything into one container, you know, one uh, casserole dish cook and you're done and that was something a lot of folks were looking for at the time because of uh you know women going out into the workplace and um just looking for ways to save time crock pots was another one crock pots were huge huge we did a lot of crock pot cooking in our house we got honeyed ham and apple ring having the foggiest here's an easy lasagna hamburger medley well, hamburger medley there. Hot enchilada dogs. Last minute dinner. What's it take? 11 minutes. So hopefully last 11 minutes dinner. Nona's Italian sausage. No Italian woman named Nona wanted her name attached to this, I'm sure. But there you go. Mermaid's Imperial Delight. Let's take a look at Mermaid's Imperial Delight. Takes about 15 minutes. Six servings. Half a cup of chopped green pepper. Two tablespoons butter or margarine. Oh, margarine was big in the 70s too. One pound medium shrimp, shelled and cleaned. Two cups of cooked rice. One and a half cups of mayonnaise. A can of peas, drained. A package of crab meat, six ounces. Drained and flaked. Canned or frozen 
thawed. Okay, so canned or thawed, but frozen. Gotcha. Salt and pepper to taste. Set power selected high in a two-quart casserole dish. Heat green pepper and butter one and a half to two and a half minutes, stirring once. Add shrimp and heat three to four minutes, stirring once. Stir in remaining ingredients. Set power select at medium, heat, oh, heat covered six and a half to seven and a half minutes or until heated through, stirring once. Top, if desired, with buttered breadcrumbs. <laughs> That's good eating. We have a ch uh, simple chicken pot pie, sausage and bean casserole, paella, party tuna casserole, Saturday night supper. You gotta sit down and watch some Saturday Night Live with your Saturday Night Supper. That's living. Turkey Tetrazzini. We got eggs and cheese. Now, I know that my father-in-law, I think, my, my wife has mentioned that he was mega excited about doing scrambled eggs in the microwave. I know not why. You can scramble eggs in about five minutes on the, ta on the stove top. I <laughs> do the idea of maybe cutting a minute off of the time. But again, it was sort of like, it was like magic. You put stuff in here, beep, 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 and pa -da, it's it's food. Um, it felt a little bit like, I don't know if you remember old Star Trek, Kirk ordering a chicken sandwich and the little thing opens up and there's a chicken sandwich with tribbles in his case. We generally didn't get tribbles out of the microwave, thankfully. Oh, that would have been messy. Uh, so you have omelets, onion cheese pie, Swiss cheese fondue, Welsh rarebit, macaroni and cheese. Oh, sandwiches, Armenian lunch, barbecued beef sandwiches. So basically heated sandwiches. Heavenly French dip. Heavenly. Pizza Heroes, red, red delicious sandwich. What's that use? Four slices of raisin bread, toasted. Mustard, kind of already lost me there. Uh, what does it say? Is that half? Half a pound of sliced cooked ham, half an apple sliced, four slices of American cheese. Set power select at medium high. Spread bread with mustard. Arrange on paper plate. Place half ham on bread. Top with apple, then remaining ham. Heat two and two to two and a half minutes. Top with cheese. Set power select at medium, heat two to two and a half minutes or until cheese begins to melt. Interesting. We got Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe, Sloppy, Sloppy Joe. Surprise burgers. <laughs> Surprise, I made it in the microwave. Texas Tommy's. No idea, but it uses Frankfurters. I love back in the day when we used the term Frankfurters still. And bacon and American cheese. Uh, that's probably not too bad. We got vegetables and side dishes, which in this day and age usually means throwing frozen stuff in there and letting it go. Cheesy vegetable casserole, ratatouille, orange glazed carrots, honey acorn squash, baked stuffed potatoes, buttered crumb potatoes, mashed potatoes, quick scallop potatoes, pastas, grains, and cereals. And there's some extra uh, instructions for that. Florida-style noodles. Do not know what that means. Unaware that Florida had its own style of noodle. I have a weird feeling most Floridians are probably also unaware of that. Hop and John. That's I cook that every New Year's Day. Which reminds me, that's not too far away. Uh, well, I'm recording this before New Year's. I'm not sure when I'm going to actually put it onto the site. Uh, Spanish rice. Granola cereal, nice and spicy oatmeal. Breads, muffins, coffee cakes. That These intrigue me too. That would be kind of fun. I know my, my, my daughter has done these things where you mix some stuff in a cup and you put it in and you get like a kind of a cake or something. So that might be pretty doable. Pecan sticky buns. Siesta cornbread. Easy morning muffins. I wish that was my nickname. Oh, well. Uh, marmalade gingerbread, holiday cranberry coffee cake. Sweets and treats. Now, one of the things my mother did do with microwave cooking, oh, those many years ago, was um, 
there was a whole big thing where you would buy these, well, I'll say chocolate chips, but they were bigger than that. They were, they were, you know, about yay size. I don't know, something like that. You know, different kinds of chocolate. And you would, um, you would melt them in the microwave and pour them into these candy molds and then put those in the freezer and you get these different shaped, you know, chocolates and stuff. And I remember, I remember my mom doing a bunch of that. Not exactly the same thing they have in mind here where you're making apple spice tarts, a festive rum cake, cider spice cake. I gotta be honest, most of this stuff sounds great. I mean, if you could really do it in the, uh, in the microwave, all the better. I mean, when I was a kid, I'll admit, I really wanted kind of an easy bake oven because I don't, this is different. I'm sure for other kids during the Gen X days, but candy wasn't that easy to come by and sweets and all that stuff. Um, that's why Halloween was such a big deal, uh, for our generation. Cause that was your, that was your candy hall for the year. Other than that, you didn't get much. You could maybe, you know, worm some gum out of your parents at the grocery store once in a while, but maybe some Tic Tacs, which probably for their own good too. But, um, you know, so you didn't get like a lot of fancy desserts like you do nowadays. It was more of a big deal. And um, the idea of an easy bake oven was like, I can make my own cake in my room. They couldn't control me. Um I never got one, of course, but, uh, and probably for the best. And let's be honest, if you've seen what I look like, you know that I've gotten plenty of cakes since childhood has not been a problem. Well, maybe a problem. Fruit desserts, baked apples, chunky applesauce, brandied peaches, fruit cobbler. Oh, I love a good peach cobbler. It's the best stuff. Pies, you get preparing pie crusts. Coconut lemon, mer lemon meringue pie, grasshopper pie. Hopefully not using real grasshoppers. Maybe that's one of Klaus Schwab's favorites. Great grape, now great grape pie. Interesting. Oh, grape juice and gelatin. Huh. That's interesting. That's tempting. And some special extras. Blanching fresh vegetables. Jam and jelly jamboree. Uh, that's kind of cool that you could you could do jams and stuff in the microwave. Bread dough ornaments, very festive. Liqueurs and brandies. Dried flowers. That actually makes sense. And the appendix: heating, frozen convenience foods. So TV dinners and things like that. They give you some ideas of how long it should take, uh, which is actually kind of handy because it does differ from microwave to microwave heating canned goods and don't put the can in quick tips etc so there you go a slice of the 80s early 80s anyways when we all believed we were going to be doing most of our cooking with our microwave did not turn out to be that way you mostly heat frozen foods i remember when we went and bought the microwave the salesman taught me how to cook hot dogs in the microwave. And so that was like a big deal. It's like, oh, I can heat up my own hot dogs. Finally, I have become a man. Um, it was a big deal. And of course, like any, like any cookbook from the past, you get all sorts of stuff that mom saved. Vegetable soup, wonton. These are pretty... These I'm going to hold on to, of course, because it's in my mom's handwriting, and I miss her a lot. But uh, you always had you always had those little extras that were tucked into the back of a cookbook, and you really value them later on more than you might think you would. So there we have it: the Panasonic microwave cookbook from oh, I think it was actually '78 when it was when it was published. Um, 79 or 78. But this was a thing in the 80s for a little while. And before very long, 
people figured out, nope, we're going to still need our, our uh, cooktops and our, and our ovens. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to be living the microwave life like we thought we were. And they stuck around because they're convenient, but uh, not for this kind of cooking. So, hey, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me uh, attempt any actual microwave cooking. Um, might take a little work on my part to figure out how to make it, make it work with our current microwave because it's not as powerful as the old Panasonic. But I might be able to figure it out. Uh, any special recipes I mentioned that piqued your interest, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I'd, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you'd give it a like. Uh, maybe think about subscribing so you can get other gripping glimpses into pop culture past. And, uh, I don't know, other weird cooking ideas that didn't take off. Uh, maybe think about sharing with a friend. You know, maybe you have a friend who does some cooking and they get a kick out of this video. In the meantime, God bless everybody. Please be kind to one another. And uh, try to have some fun out there. And I will see you next time in Dad's Den of Pop Culture. <laughs>